Welcome to the Jamoti Podcast. We are all surrounded by amazing coaches and leaders. So let's get an inside look at not just what they do, but how they do what they do. After all, becoming the best versions of ourselves is Jamoti, just a matter of doing it. Coaches, the Jamoti Podcast is powered by Shoot360. The future of basketball has arrived in Dallas, Fort Worth. Shoot360 combines the latest sports technology with the fundamentals of basketball skill development. The result is a one of a kind video game like basketball program designed to improve your shooting, dribbling, and passing. Visit shoot360dfw.com to learn more and register for your free one hour workout evaluation. Shoot360, the future of basketball is here. So you've been able to train, you know, just some high level achievers uh, at, at, at in different sports. But what's something that you if you could kind of choose a common theme or thread that they all have? What is that? Yeah. So, you know, I thought about this and um, yeah, I've been lucky to see a lot of different athletes over the years. The one thing I always feel like wins wins out is, is the consistency. OK, it's hard to. It's hard to be consistency. And let's just call it the skill of showing up. It's a skill. It's a skill. You got to show up. Okay. And, and one guy that stuck out to me while I was my short period in the NBA was, was a Brad Beal. Okay. He showed up every day, ready to go. He, he over time developed a routine that helped him feel better and ready to go. Now he wasn't a guy knocking down my door to get into the weight room. But anytime I needed him to get in to get our work in, he showed up. He showed up on time. He's ready to work. He puts in a good effort. And so when he had that structure uh, and he knew what helped him feel better and, and prepare better, he sh- he's showing up. And I think I think all the best athletes do that. And it'd be hard to argue against like, you know, if you're just unless you're just ultra talented and 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 at the NBA level, everybody's talented, like you said. But I think as a high school player, as a college player, you have to be able to show up when you don't want to show up. Okay. Like I remember a strength coach years ago that I was mentored by. He he told me, he's like, man, if we all worked out when we felt great, we'd all work out once a month. Okay. Like let's keep it real. There's there's always going to be a little bit of as as an athlete in sport, yeah. you can have some nicks and some aches and some pain. You have you can make every reason why. I don't want to work out. I didn't get eight hours of sleep. Uh, my neck is sore. My my ankles are sore. If we make those excuses, we can never show up. Okay. If you don't show up, you're not going to get better at anything. You're just not. So I think there's a skill in that that show up right and consistently. And I and I got got to really see guys that were committed as you know specifically specifically as veterans, uh, maybe guys that figured it out later in their career. You know. So uh, I thought that was I found that to be pretty helpful here. Yeah, man, consistency showing up. If if kids can get that down, that's a life skill that's going to help you in anything. You know, I really, I really truly believe that. And and then I think on top of that too is like it's players that realize that there's there's so much more to the game than just showing up to skill workouts, showing up to the AAU tournaments and practice. There's so much more. Okay. And so years ago I had to really realize, like, man, how am I able to grow my business um so well? Is it it's not the push-ups. It's not the squats. It's not the, it's not the exercise selection. It's, it's got to be more than sets and reps. Okay, what is it? Well, I come to realize, you know, so much of it's about relationships. It's building that connection with the kid. It's it's, it's building that belief that that they can trust me. I want to help them. They they know that I'm there to got I got get their back. And that's basically what we've built is is a, a nice family community of like, hey, you walk in the door as long as you reciprocate with some good effort and you're and you're smart and you're uh, you follow instructions you're coachable we're going to get better together and it's going to be a lot of fun you know and so so the athletes i think that learn like hey man there's so much more than just the training there's the sleep there's the nutrition there's the recovery there's my pregame prep there's my there's my postgame prep you know maybe it's a lift maybe it's a stretch being attentive to other things i think the guys that have been most successful are the guys that understand that's part of the puzzle, man. You know, most people, hopefully, you know, we all, we all should wake up and brush our teeth when we wake up, you know, that's a part of our day. And it does that we don't think about it. I think, I think these higher level professional athletes that have had great careers and, and lengthy careers, it's not an accident. You got to look at their schedule. What do they do? It's a lot yeah. more, a lot more than just showing up, getting shots. It's a lot more than 6am grinding workouts on Instagram. It's not that. 
there's a lot of deeper things that affect our success and performance, you know? So that's, that's what it really, what I've noticed, you know, with some of these higher level guys. You had a nugget earlier in our talk. Uh, you said it's, it's not, it's still hard, but it's less hard. And I really like that because the, it, I think sometimes with our players, the, the, their mind is if I just do this a f- enough times, it won't suck anymore. Well, no, it, it probably, if you're pushing and if you're, if you're training hard, there's always going to be a level, a little level of discomfort, you know, a level that you're not, you don't feel great about, or you wish you could pull back a little bit. It, that doesn't go away, but it's just less hard. I would imagine consistency really helps that feeling come, right? Is that because they keep showing up, you know what? It's less hard now, still hard, but less than before. Yeah, man. I mean, like, let's, let's, let's keep it real. Like if you've been a coach, you've been a player, you know, for anybody listening and stuff, like, why do we want it easy? Do we really want it easy? Do you really want it easy? Cause if it's easy, everybody's going to do it. Everybody's going to have it. And then it's not that rewarding, right? Like if we could all shoot like Steph Curry, we wouldn't care about Steph Curry. Right. We just wouldn't. It'd just be like, whatever it's, it's normal. So why, why don't we want to embrace a little bit of hard and then how does that not develop a skill set, a toughness, maybe toughness is not the right word, but uh, a durability to withstand stress in other aspects of our life? Okay, family, uh, school, uh, career. How does that not help us? I, that's why I feel like sports is such a tremendous tool to help us in other aspects of our life. You got to embrace hard, man. And it's and that's something as a co- as a kid, you're early on. I didn't have that. I didn't have that explanation. Hmm. I doubt outside on the court working on drills and skills. And then I would just kick the basketball out of frustration because I just, I missed my handle. I dropped my handle. I just lost it. I'd be so mad. I didn't realize that I'm supposed to fail. I got to go fast enough, hard enough to fail. So I realize how, how I can get better. Okay. And so I think we, we need to embrace hard. We, we want hard. Like my business, it's hard, man. I don't want it easy. I want to yeah. earn. I want to earn. I want my kids to earn it. I want them to feel like, man, I learned so much. And that's why I think we, we probably learn a lot from thinking about like, wow, that, uh, the process of that, the journey of that, I think is really what we're, we should be excited about. And that's where really the, the meat and potatoes is. And then when you, maybe you have an accolade, you get, you, you reach your goal or something like that. That's, that's icing on the cake. It's more of the lessons inside of that process. How did you get there? How did you, what did you do? It's a lot of this, man. It's a lot of up and down. I tell my kids all the time, like we track uh, some of our training performance metrics on a force plate and, and, and their data points are much of like, it's much like life, man. It's like, you're going to have some high, some low, some high, some low, but excuse me, from A to Z, it's going to be that that's the trend, but there's going to be some up and down. So it's never linear. It's never, that's not, and, and that's not life. It's not life, you know, so we, we shouldn't really want it that way. But I think, if as a kid coming up as an athlete, like if I knew that, man, I would have been able, I would have been so much easier on myself. I was so hard on myself. Like yeah. I suck and I'm yeah. not good enough. And, and then I just beat myself up mentally. And that definitely held me back personally as an athlete. But I didn't have anybody. No, we, we didn't talk about these things. It wasn't a wasn't a thing, you know, in the 90s, you know, when I'm coming up 80s, 90s. <laughs> That's right. Well, it wasn't, you know. So, I, I love that mantra, though, of, of embracing hard. And I think, I mean, I'm at a, again, I, I mentioned it a, a small Christian private school where majority of these kids have had it pretty good. You know, if they're at faith, parents are doing okay, like silver spoon, you know, so not a lot of adversity has come their way. And so the balance that I'm finding is, is yes, we want to embrace hard and there's going to be challenges, but then I think maybe the art of it too in coaching is, how can we still make it fun? Because for a lot of my players, there's not this carrot dangling out in front of them of college basketball like I had. Like, coach, I'll do whatever you say because this is where I want to get. For some of my guys, it's they just want to be a part of a team. They want to be a part of a, a program and they want to you know, have athletics be something that they did, but their life, is they're already looking beyond. So I guess maybe a question for you. How do I have them? Because I feel like we do that at faith, but how do I have them embracing hard, but then also understanding that in part of that struggle, there's a lot of fun in that as well. 
yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe for each kid, it's like that, you know, really well, it's like set them up with a certain goal or a certain, certain target. Okay. You know, that's, that's reachable, but like challenging enough, like, Hey, you're gonna have to work for this, man. You know, in, in cases that I think of kids, you know, like it might be body fat, you know, getting body fat to a certain level that might be getting strength to a certain level. It might be getting their jump to a certain level and saying, Hey, that's our target, man. I don't know when it's going to come. A lot of this is going to be dependent on your effort and consistency. The skill is showing up, you know, um, it's going to be hard, but man, when you get that, you know, and I think as a coach, I think part of my success is, is framing like what could be. Okay. So as a coach for you, I would say frame what could be. Maybe it's that kid is like, man, I want to be stronger. Okay. Do you really want to be stronger? Your habits aren't really showing you want to be stronger. Okay. But hey, let's visualize what would it be like to have 10 pounds of muscle in that, the shoulders. Okay. Wow. That'd be, man, that'd be incredible. Wow. You start to visualize, put it in their head. What could that be like? Man, my game would be so different, man. Like I'm going into people versus people throwing me back going to the, going to the hoop, you know? So frame it. We're like, wow, what could be if I did that? And so like, I do that all the time. So at my gym, I have like hanging tennis balls as like markers to touch, you know, it's like automatic vertical jump testimonials, <laughs> you know, one, one day you're touching the shortest one next. Wow, I like that. I like that. Higher. And then the ultimate is we have events that's 11 feet. So we, when guys touch that, like that's the ultimate, you know, it's so cool. And I tell kids all the time, man, Hey, we're going to keep man. man. Imagine when we get to that next tennis ball, bro. Like that's, that's great. You know, you're going to be so much more athletic. Right. And so I'm framing the success. And when they're listening to me, they're like, wow, if coach is telling me this, like, he must really believe that I can do it. And I truly do, you know, and, and I make that sort of my responsibility to say anything that I frame for them, I really got to put them in position to be successful versus like, you know, so funny, a funny side story is like one of my trainers, his, his kid is, um, he, he, he's super, he's young and he's super short and he's a basketball nut. And he's, he, he might, he might be five feet, you know, if he's lucky. And, um, one of my other kids in the same grade is like dunking already. And he's been training for a good year. Or so he he's, he's got the natural athletic genes in his butt and his, his, his uh, he just has it. And, uh, but this younger kid is just, you know, slow growing, you know, and the, and the parent was like, he's like, I'll pay you a thousand bucks if you can get him to dunk next year. And I was like, ah, you know, I, I don't think I can frame that for that guy because it's, you know, just might not be there right now, but maybe down the road. You know? So I would frame things differently for him. It's like, Hey, we we're actually going for that first tennis ball. We're just going for that first one. Let's go there first, man. Let's, one step at a time, one step. But I want to put them in position to be successful so that a month, two months, three months down the road, we can say, hey, look at all the work we did. Look at our workout sheets. It took a long time. It took it took work, man. It's hard. And we want to we want to respect that process. It's got to be hard. OK, you're going to learn from that. So framing, I think, is important. I love that. And I think you nailed it, too, because you mentioned relationships early on. How can you get guys to embrace hard? There's got to be a relationship there. Because, I mean, it's the intrinsic versus extrinsic motivations. I can extrinsically motivate them by threatening them. You do this or else you're going to run. Yeah. You're going to feel pain. Yeah, that'll work for a little bit, but it's, man, it's shallow. And at some point, there's going to be no fun in that at all. But if I can somehow get them to be intrinsically motivated, it comes within them, from them, by framing it the right way, from having a relationship with them and actually knowing what their goals are. Man, you can you can take kids, in my opinion, through a lot of what would th things that suck, but man, they can all of a sudden have a smile about it, bring a little bit more energy. But I think you nailed it with that framing and relationship relationship piece. Yeah, and I gotta I gotta share something else too that's been so powerful for me as a coach, and it really framed. Uh, it's a portion of what framed my ability to be the coach that I am today. And so I grew up basically around coaches that were like, "Hey, if you made a mistake, you're punished. Go run, go do push-ups, go do whatever." Like, and no strategy to be like, "Hey, here's how we could do this a little better." And so I was used to the negativity, and then I, I grew up in a household of negativity because my dad. You know, my dad, before my parents got divorced, was the most negative person I ever met in my life. OK, and it was all negative, 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 not. Hey, good job, man. Hey, it was a tough day, but good work, man. I never had that. So not until no joke, my junior high school, we never had a lacrosse program. It wasn't a thing in my area, not for public school. 
So I had a couple of buddies that were like, hey, they, they're starting a lacrosse program. Let's let's join and just mess around, you know? I never touched lacrosse stick, man. So you can imagine how good that was. <laughs> but I love lacrosse. Why? Because it made so much sense to me for basketball, the spacing, the pick and roll, the movement. The, I excelled right away because of basketball concepts. And I loved it. And I loved the physical aspect too. Anyways, our coach was 23 years old at the time, just a graduate at MIT, played lacrosse there. He looked younger than us. We always we always joked that we was like, we got to put Mr. Getz in the game because they won't even know he's a coach. <laughs> and, uh, and he was really good. <clears throat> so I remember uh, specifically my first couple of weeks messing up a ton because we just we just didn't know how to play. We could barely pass and catch. And I'm like thinking to myself, man, this sucks. I'm negative. I'm, I'm down on myself. And I'm thinking we're just going to get crushed at running because it's a big running sport. And he was like, hey, it's all good, man. Don't worry. Like, let's go. Next play. And I was like. I was like, what, what just happened? It was like a relief off my shoulders because I was so used to like, Hey, get on the line. You guys suck. Get on the line. That's how I, I literally had been coached like that nonstop. And he was like, no, dude, it's okay. Like, let's go pick it up. Next play. Forget about it. And I was like, you can coach like that. I, I was like, I didn't think. And like, wow, all of a sudden my game exploded because I was less afraid to make mistakes, which you're supposed to make mistakes in sport. And that blossomed me as a coach. I was like, man, if I had someone there just be like, hey, this is part of the process, man. You're gonna, it's gonna be some ups and downs and learn. I feel like athletically, mentally, physically, I would have just really accelerated. And that's why that's part of the reason why I'm the coach I am today. Some of these kids don't have that. They don't have that still to this day, you know. So you got to set the path, you got to frame it and 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 show them the steps how they can be successful, you know. Man, thank you for sharing that because I think sometimes I'm 41. And so you and I are very similar in ages, you know, been doing this 16 years, which is not a long time. But after a few years, you can start to wonder, like, man, does this really matter? Like, am I actually affecting anybody's lives in any way? And and then occasionally you'll get text messages from some players like, hey, really appreciate the lessons. Really, co-. and th- Those are great coaching paychecks right there. But Absolutely. your story is exactly, I think, why why we do this, because Look at the change in uh, of the trajectory of your life because of a, a lacrosse coach, not even the sport that you're really playing, like a lacrosse coach, but he influenced you in such a huge way. And, and in some way, like if you look at a coaching tree, his tree, you're a part of that. And the athletes that you mean, that's because of that guy in a lot of ways. And so that's just a great, I mean, just a great reminder. If there's somebody listening that is in that mindset that I've been in before of, this is just seems to be, I don't feel like I'm doing any good right now. You yeah. know, like they're, they're just stay positive. Keep, keep uh, the process, keep breathing. Like Steve Kerr said, because I think we're affecting more lives than we know. Yeah. And I think that's, that's, that's also something that I did like in that, uh in that capacity, like, like, again, my, my work's hard, man. It's hard. It's, it's, it's grindy in a lot of ways. And even though I love what I do, we, we all still have, you know, good and bad days. We're human beings. Right. But one thing I recently started doing was like um, recording like what I call small wins. OK, so every season, you know, say whatever this past winter time, you know, uh, really just making notes. So I don't forget because I'll forget, you know, I'm getting older. Like, wow, this kid had a really, really good in season training period during the basketball season. In fact, so good. You know, we made some increases in our jump and our strength. And I was like, wow. And that was off once a week. You know, I'm like, wow. OK, so that was a, that was a small win, but really a big win. And so I would make note of that. And then this kid did that and that, that kid did that. And this kid made changes in this department. And so I try to remind myself that it's not just these, you know, these, these sets and reps and not just coming in the door and the volume, but like what impact are we really, really making, you know, in this process? And so I'm trying to make notes on it so I don't forget because we see so many kids and it is easy to forget. You, you might, you might forget about kids you had 10 years ago that you taught a lesson and it was like, wow, that was so powerful. You know, and you, you'll, they might come back to it. So that's that type of stuff. So it's good to, re- it's good to remember. And then if you remember, you might, you might parlay that to somebody else, you know. Coach, that's a good nugget. I, I wrote down record small wins. Yeah. I was, and it, it, I, I, and it, I love doing these talks because that's a, that's a great idea. And then sometimes, you know, you, you take it and, and maybe use it even in a different way. And so I thought like with social media, with our program, always trying to think of different ways to highlight players, especially in the spring and summer. But even during the school year, because at the school, sometimes the same guys are getting highlighted all the time. 
So yes. how can I how can I highlight some others? And I'm literally thinking this morning we're in the weight room at because we have to be in there before school. You know, it's about 6 30 a.m. And a player was able to do two reps on bench that a month ago we couldn't do. Yeah. And and I saw it and I said, Is that is that more than you've been able to do? He's like, Yeah. And there's this smile. Well, what if I just grabbed my phone and I took a picture of it of him smiling in that moment and just put it out there of hey small win today like like what a great opportunity and like you said i remember it he gets to remember that and i think also what that will do is it'll help me to be looking for those small wins more why why wouldn't we highlight that because that's that's it's measurable progress right it's also something on the mind it's a great way to challenge kids, keep kids engaged. Now, I, I love the small win. So I, I communicate that to my athletes as well. Like, hey, man, like, dude, you did this two months ago. You're crushing it now. Or you could barely touch the vent. Now you're smacking it with your palm, right? That's like, I don't need to test vertical jump anymore. You, you've proven you've made the progress, you know? And I know for me as an athlete, even now today, I'm I'm still addicted to the process. I'm addicted to getting better and finding things that make me feel better and 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 feel better to perform. And I think that's a that's a fun part of that process for athletes to, to experience. So that's why I still train myself as if I'm one of the athletes, because I need to know what's what's helping, what's working, so I can help them be better and experience similar, you know, type of things, you know. Thank you for checking out today's episode. Please take a moment to subscribe to this podcast share it with your fellow coaches, and find us on social media for what's coming up next on the Jamoti Podcast. It's just a matter of doing it.